Welcome to our time of scripture reading and devotional reflection for Saturday, June the 25th, 2022. I'm Pastor Brian J. Monroe, and this is coming to you from my office in Kitimat First Baptist Church in beautiful Kitimat, British Columbia. Today's readings are from the Revised Common Lectionary for June the 25th in what's called uh, regular time or proper time, just right before proper eight starts. Um, that just means that we're in a time of the year that has to do with uh, the church and all the things about the church. I'm reading Psalm, um, in the semi-continuous part of the Revised Common Lectionary, and that's so you can hear the word as so many Christians have heard it read to them. Widespread literacy isn't something that's really existed until mostly our time, you know, the Industrial Revolution, uh, Enlightenment period, that's when they started printing books, and then finally teaching everybody to read. Before then, reading was something that only happened with the, uh, with the academic class, uh, but now everyone can read. But everyone could hear, and for those who could read, to read to those who could hear, made a huge impact on their lives. And hopefully that's what will happen when, when we read the scriptures together. And uh, also I'll be reading a devotional. So we're using the semi-continuous and that means that we'll be starting out with Psalm 16. Uh, and that Psalm has the word Salah uh, partway through it. And at that point, I'm gonna stop and pause for about 10 seconds because that's what that word means. It means pause. It's not meant to be read. It's simply an instruction to those who are singing or chanting or reading the psalm. So Psalm 77, sorry, not Psalm 16, Psalm 77, verses 1 and 2 and verses 11 and 20. I cry aloud to God, aloud to God, and he will hear me. In the day of my trouble, I seek the Lord. In the night my hand is stretched out without wearying, so my soul refuses to be comforted. I will remember the deeds of the Lord. Yes, I will remember your wonders of old. I will ponder all your work and meditate on your mighty deeds. Your way, O oh God, is holy. What God is great, like our God? You are the God who works wonders. You have made known your might among among the peoples you with you you with your arm redeemed your people the children of Jacob and Joseph when the waters saw you o god when the waters saw you they were afraid indeed the deep trembled the clouds poured out water, the skies gave forth thunder, your arrows flashed on every side. The crash of your thunder was in the whirlwind, your lightnings lighted up the world, and the earth trembled and shook. Your way was through the sea, your path through the great waters, yet your footprints were unseen. You led your people like a flock by the hand of Moses and Aaron. 2 Kings chapter 1 verses 13 to 18 then chapter 2 verses 3 to 5 Again the king sent the captain of a third 50 with his 50 and the third captain of 50 went up and came and fell on his knees before Elijah and entreated him O oh, man of God please let my life and the life of these 50 servants of yours be precious in your sight Behold, behold, fire came down from heaven and consumed two former captains of fifty men with their fifties. But now let my life be precious in your sight. Then the angel of the Lord said to Elijah, Go down with him. Do not be afraid of him. So he arose and went down with him to the king and said to him, Thus says the Lord, Because you have sent messengers to inquire of Baal, Baal Zebub, the god of Ekron, it is because there is no god in is it because there is no god in Israel to inquire of his word. Therefore, you shall not come down from the bed to which you have gone up, 
but you shall surely die. So he died according to the word that Elijah had spoken. Jehoram became king in his place in the second year of Jehoram, the son of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah. In the second year of Jehoram, the son of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, became Ahaziah. Ahaziah. Sorry, I'm butchering this. Ahaziah had no son. Now the rest of the acts of Ahaziah that he did, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Israel? And the sons of the prophets who were led, who were in Bethel, came out to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take away your master from over you? And he said, Yes, I know it. Keep quiet. Elijah said to him, Elisha, please stay here, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. But Elisha said, As the Lord lives and as you live, I will not leave you. So they came to Jericho. The sons of the prophets who were at Jericho drew near to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take away your master from over you? And Elisha answered, Yes, I know it. Keep quiet. Luke chapter 9, verses 21 to 27. And Jesus strictly charged and commanded them to tell this to no one, saying, The Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. And he said to all, If anyone would come after me, let that person deny himself or herself and take up his or her cross daily and follow me. For whoever would save his or her life will lose it. But whoever loses his or her life for my sake will save it. For what does it profit a man or a woman if he gains the whole world, or she gains the whole world, but then forfeits himself or herself? For whoever is ashamed of me in my words, of that person will the Son of Man be ashamed. And when the Son of Man comes in his glory and the glory of the Father and of the holy angels, But I tell you truly, there are some standing here who will not taste death until they see the kingdom of God. This is your eternal word, Almighty Father. We praise you for having provided it to us. May you grant us through the power of the Holy Spirit the ability to receive it, to understand it, to have it work within us what is good and pleasing to your will. We pray this to your glory in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And now, from Oswald Chambers' classic daily devotional, My Utmost for His Highest, we receive, we read for June 25th, Receiving Oneself in the Fires of Sorrow. Now my soul is troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour? No. It was for this very reason I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it and will glorify it again. The crowd that was there and heard it said it had thundered. Others said an angel had spoken to Jesus. My attitude as a saint to sorrow and difficulty is not to ask that they may be prevented but to ask that I may preserve the self God created me to be through every fire of sorrow. Our Lord received himself in the fire of sorrow. He was saved not from the hour, but out of the hour. We say that there ought to be no sorrow, but there is sorrow. And we have to receive ourselves in its fires. If we try and evade sorrow, refuse to lay our account with it, we are foolish. Sorrow is one of the biggest facts in life. It is no use saying sorrow ought not to be. Sin and sorrow and suffering are. And it is not for us to say that God has made a mistake in allowing them. Sorrow burns up a great amount of shallowness, but it does not always make a person better. 
Suffering either gives me myself or it destroys myself. You cannot receive yourself in success. You lose your head. You cannot receive yourself in monotony. You grouse. The way to find yourself is in the fires of sorrow. Why it should be so is another matter, but that it is, tr it, but that it is so is true in the scriptures and in human experience. You always know the man or woman who has been through the fires of sorrow and received himself or herself. You are certain you can go to that person in trouble and find that he or she has ample leisure for you. If a person has not been through the fires of sorrow, that person is apt to be contemptuous. That person will have no time for you. If you receive yourself in the fires of sorrow, God will make you nourishment for other people. Let us pray. Father, it is in pain, it is in suffering, it is in the fires of sorrow that you build the depth of character in us as we rely on you. And that gives us something of value to say to others who have not heard your voice yet. May we, you, may we receive ourselves in sorrow, the fires of sorrow, so that we may spread your love to others in their fires of sorrow. In Christ we pray. Amen. Well, thank you, friends, for spending some time listening to scripture being read and devotional ideas, and I apologize for butchering some names, and I'll try to do better next time. Until we're able to be together again, sorry, together again to do more of the same, I bid you in the name of Jesus Christ, Shalom.